Iceland is dominating the world stage in every aspect of progress, which maybe isn't that strange since beer was banned until 1989. But really, the world's best education systems, the most peaceful nations in the world, the happiest people in the world, Iceland is either at the very top or very close to it. But why? Does beer really have such a big impact on society? Well, probably, but Iceland's progress stems from something else. You see, Iceland society is structured after something called the Nordic model. And this is the reason for Iceland's prosperity, but if the nation's recipe for success is this model, why not copy it? Why is this small, volcanic, beer-hating, freezing cold nation beating the rest of the world so thoroughly? The short answer is it's complicated, but it all started about a hundred years ago. Chapter 1 – Birth of the Nordic Model Iceland's path towards becoming an island paradise can be traced back to a very unpleasant time, namely the Great Depression. It was the worst economic crisis in the 20th century, and Iceland, like many other nations, was hit hard. The small nation, which relied on the export of commodities like fish and agricultural products, struggled to sell when global demand plummeted. The nation's many small fishing and farming communities struggled to make ends meet and small businesses had to be closed. Many Icelandic banks went bankrupt, which resulted in a loss of savings for citizens. Unemployment ravaged the nation's communities and peaked at around 25% in some years. The massive struggles created desperation in the Icelandic people and the nation entered a state of widespread social unrest. With nothing but uncertainty on the horizon, some started emigrating to other nations, particularly Canada and the US. Those leaving Iceland were often capable, competent and young. In other words, the most crucial part of the labour force. Something had to be done quickly, and it had to both solve the economic problems and the social unrest in the nation. The steps and measures taken at the time became the building blocks for the nation we see today. The first step was massively increasing government spending on directly supporting the people, in other words, becoming a welfare state. Chapter 2 – The Welfare State The first key part of the Nordic model and something that would later be heavily expanded upon in the latter half of the 1900s. Unemployment benefits were introduced on a larger scale and existing benefits were expanded upon. As we previously discussed, unemployment was at extreme levels, and these measures helped make ends meet for those affected, farms were subsidised, and housing support programmes were implemented, which helped people keep roofs over their heads. As direct support from the government increased, so did the stability in the nation and the optimism in its people. As the decades passed, Iceland kept building upon its existing policies and initiatives slowly creating this vital part of the Nordic model. While the system has evolved and changed from what it once was in the 1930s, the core thoughts remain. To keep the nation and its people stable and safe, you need to support those who need it the most. Clashes between social classes in society are mostly caused by desperation and a need for change. By ensuring that the lower classes are supported and lifted into society instead of excluded, Society stays cohesive and stable. But Iceland's systems come with a very prominent drawback. It's extremely expensive. The nation's taxes, which are absurdly high by global standards, represents this drawback. The top personal income tax rate in Iceland is 46.25%. Iceland, however, argues that while the system is costly, the cost of homelessness, potentially more violence, and higher unemployment would cost more. So to avoid this, Iceland has a no-man-left-behind approach, ensuring that people who are down on their luck are integrated back into society. If you lose your job, for example, unemployment benefits will support you while you try to find a new one. A common misconception is that a comprehensive and generous welfare state would incentivize a population which tries to live off welfare. But while the welfare is quite generous, the conditions for being eligible for welfare are quite strict. You get welfare after losing your job, but only while actively searching for a new one. The point is to help people stay afloat in difficult times, not to allow people to live off government support. The government tries to force the unemployed population to find work in this way. Iceland aims to create a more cohesive society where the lower classes are helped up into the middle class in this way. The focus on cohesion and integration is also found in the healthcare and education system, which is mostly completely free. The thought is that by providing people with the same opportunities through healthcare and education, society will become more equal as well. 
The Icelandic people all get access to the same education, regardless of their socio-economic background. By removing financial barriers such as tuition fees, students are not limited to their educational choices based on their financial circumstances. Healthcare is similar in arrangement. Iceland won't settle for a situation where people stay sick to avoid paying for healthcare. Instead, healthcare is provided, which ensures an overall more healthy and therefore productive workforce while making society more equal as well. But the nation's taxes are not simply a means to pay for the welfare state. They also aim to redistribute wealth. A capitalist's nightmare, I know. Iceland focuses on cohesion within its society and trying to boost the nation's poorer classes. By having a progressive tax system, which means that the more you earn, the more you are taxed, more of the wealth from richer classes is funneled into the state. This system aims to minimize the divide between rich and poor in the nation. But despite the very high taxes, the Icelandic people on average see taxes in a positive light. This is due to the visible effect of their taxes. All Icelandic children get access to the nation's world-class education for free, with their parents knowing that their taxes are the reason for it. This is also true for trips to the dentist or the hospital. Seeing the effect their taxes have on their daily life so often makes them a lot easier to pay as well. It also evokes a sense of pride, knowing that you're contributing to society. Chapter 3. The Icelandic Model the Icelandic model is an agreement between Icelandic labour unions, employers and employees in Iceland, which decided the framework for the labour market. Employees would be guaranteed decent salaries, limited working hours and fair working conditions. The employers, on the other hand, got the ability to hire and adjust their workforce as needed, which provides a massive boost to flexibility and adaptability in business. Additionally, if an Icelandic employee was let go, they would be supported by the welfare state, all in all, creating a win-win situation. Employees enjoy job security and decent working conditions, while employers have the flexibility to manage their workforce efficiently, leading to economic growth and stability. The fact that Iceland lacks a minimum wage shows just how large the ongoing cooperation between unions and employers are. The wage for different jobs is continuously being readjusted and discussed by the involved parties. Iceland argues that direct and dynamic discussions between employers and unions creates a more flexible and stable labour market overall. The Great Compromise also includes politics, and here it focuses on cooperation as an utmost priority, instead of a polarised political climate, with political parties clashing on every issue. Iceland and its politicians seek compromises and agreements. The nation has understood that in order to stay stable and not make politics divisive, the politicians and political parties themselves have to collaborate. There are few countries like Iceland where politicians from parties on each side of the political spectrum can be seen having a friendly cup of coffee. The likelihood of seeing Trump and Biden do that is rather low. But why not replicate the entire system in other nations? Why let Iceland and its Scandinavian neighbours sit alone at the top? Chapter 4. Values well, the reason that it works so well is the unique set of values in the Icelandic population. Unlike areas that developed around the formation of large corporate-owned farms, the history of Iceland is largely one of family-driven agriculture. This resulted in a nation which developed with people facing the same challenges. Solutions that benefit one part of society are likely to benefit all members. Iceland has therefore resulted in a society which trusts both its government but also their fellow Icelanders. While another nation might be able to copy the Icelandic system on paper, making it work in praxis is another beast entirely. Introducing massive taxes and restructuring people's view of politics, not to mention how politics work, is extremely difficult, if not impossible. The Icelandic system works so well for Iceland because it makes use of the trust within the Icelandic people. There are not many places on earth where people would give up such large portions of their income, trusting that the government would spend it responsibly and that their fellow man would refrain from exploiting the system. In other parts of the world, people simply have a different mindset, which makes both the system and the Icelandic people so very unique and interesting.